Hi guys, um, Trini here from all the way from sunny New Zealand. It's a beautiful summer's day here and you may even see in the background our hedge. Um, I'm just going to wait for the 15 second lag and make sure that you're all here. Seeing you talking about snow, I don't know if you guys know but I'm, I love snow. So let me know if you can hear me. Oh, Pam can see me. Hi. I'm very excited. All right. So obviously you guys can see me. And you've all gone quiet. Hey, Kerry. I'm just waiting to see if you guys can see me and hear me okay. Looks like. Oh, Marlene can't. Uh-oh. Pam has seen me. Can't see her. You. Just checking. So what we might do, there's a couple of people who can't see me, so if you guys can refresh your browsers, that would be really good, although you probably won't hear me say that, will you? Hello Goldie Fish, you can see me, fantastic, okay, so you guys can see me, so we're going to get started. So um, in case you don't know who I am, my name is Trina McLoon, and I have been with Prima for about four years now, maybe a little bit longer. Um, first I was on their design team for a couple of years and then for the last year and a half I have been working as an educator. And that just means that I teach for Prima and I teach lots of classes all throughout New Zealand because that's where I'm based, um, but also internationally as well. And uh, last year, for example, I was in Indonesia, the States and Sydney as well as New Zealand. So um, that's part of what us educators do and it's lots of fun because we get to play with all the Prima goodies. And um, today, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be using the new Stationers Desk Range, which is delightful and um, I've been wanting a bit of red coming into Primo so I'm very excited because there's uh, a very deep maroon red coming through and it's just beautiful. Um, this is our little, oops wrong way, this is our project that we're going to be making and we'll get to see more of it as we go along. But basically um, it started off as a wooden box like this which then got gessoed, gessoed and pulled apart and then it made this. But before we go any further, there's just a couple of um, announcements that I'll, I'll tell you now and then I'll tell you again at the end. Um, look out for the next class on Live with Prima, which is Frank and Jody Lee on Tuesday the 4th of February. Oh, that's my dad's birthday. And um, they are going to be showing the new Princess collection. So that's going to be super cool and it's at 11 o'clock Pacific time, 11 a.m. So keep an eye on that. And Art Venture Canada, you guys have got to see this if you're in Canada um, or in the top part of the states or anywhere in the world. Um, Art Ventures are so much fun. I taught at the one here in New Zealand last year and it's just an amazing way to get together with other like-minded people and get inspiration from people and as a teacher I find that I learn off you guys as much as you learn off me I hope and it's just loads and loads of fun so I'll tell you more about it at the end um, in the meantime let's get on with this what I'm going to do is show you some of the papers and product first and then we'll get started on the actual project so I'm going to just move the camera down a little bit and oops this is my desk my husband thinks it's really clean at the moment so he's quite happy and for some reason that's not staying let's just twist that a bit there we go okay so what we've got here are four or five papers one 
two, three, four, five that I'm using, all from Stationer's Desk. And we're going to be doing a little bit of just normal plain cutting. We're also going to be doing some hand cutting or fussy cutting from this particular paper. Um, and the rest of it is just going to be, oh, lots of punching. We've got lots of punches and we've also got a bit of just one die cut. And just having a lot of fun really. So this page, as I said, I really love the red and it's so nice to see it coming back and I particularly love all the roses that you can fussy cut around here but you've still got this beautiful red with the lovely writing on it throughout here so that could be a really good base for something um, because it's still textured with the writing underneath. On the back is again more fussy cutting. Now this one here is called Red Romance and the number for it is 813833. Um, we're going to be using that. We have also got this gorgeous stripe. Uh, this one is called Stamp and Stripes. So that makes sense, doesn't it? But again, you've got that textured layered look because you've got the, the book page type thing underneath with the stripes across and then some white writing in the corners and down the sides. So that's delightful. On the back is a gorgeous grey and again lots and lots of layers. And this is what I like in my bases where if I'm not using a white cardstock I love something like this that is quite plain but at the same time there's lots of stuff that's just there that can add into your layer layout in a layered way. <clears throat> Here we've got another gorgeous piece and this one really ties in well with the stripes here with the, the gold colour and again lots and lots of layers you can see that there the, all the different whites and the writings and the different things there beautiful this one is called captured drama that's cool captured drama and, and you are you're capturing drama in your scrapbooks um, this number is 813796 and again what we've got here is wonderful areas that you can hand cut little pieces from. This would make a fabulous little decoration on one part of your layout or project that you wanted to do. Black. I love adding bits of black into my work. The, the beauty of black is that it really makes things pop and by using this, which I'm doing in the project, you'll see how it makes the hole to the, um, the birdhouse really stand out. And on the other side, we've got more of the grey and more hand cut areas. And of course, you can see through, there's lots of things like these pencils that you can see, which is in the typewriter, which is all part of the um, stationer's range, which is, you know, why it's called stationer's desk. And it's got all the stationary bits in it. And finally, we have a really cool piece of paper. Now, I love this for two reasons. One is that you can either use it as a whole piece if you're using the back and this is a fabulous back because it's very um, plain but it's got a, just enough of you know extra bits and texture and dimension in it but if otherwise if you're using this side you can either use it as it is or you can cut out each piece and use it perhaps as a mini album and you know these can be your inside pages or you could just use one on a card or you could you know cut out another one to use for a layout so you can use this one piece of paper perhaps three or four or five six times depending on what you're doing. So those are our papers that we're using. Unfortunately, because um, we didn't, Prem didn't have all the stock in when um, I was making the project, I don't have a lot of new um, flowers or anything like that. Um, but, so I haven't added them to the project, but I have got some really cool ones that I can show you. And here they all are. Aren't they gorgeous? Now this is one that I've actually used. I'll, I'll tell you in a little bit about a little prize that we're going to have. And what I've done is I've used the, this particular packet. is 575366. And this one comes with another beautiful big red flower as well. And that's on the prize that I've made. So we'll sh show you that in just a little bit. Um, across here, these are some of my favourites. There is a whole range of blacks and greys flowers and they've got the most gorgeous shine to them and they've got a little glittery um, crystal in the middle of them. Now their number is 574581. We may add some of those to our project. 
this, these lot here are very um, typical of your cream of flowers, the beautiful layering of the flowers. We've got some beautiful leaves in there as well, all in the um, stationer's desk range of designs. And um, lovely little green bits that you can either pull off, you know, the, the leaves, or use them as they are. They're just stunning. But then, hey, when is cream of stuff not stunning? It's never not stunning. It's beautiful. And this is another packet, again, using the stationer's desk range of designs, but giving you a range of colours. And also the centres are slightly different on some of them. We've got some with the little pearls and some with the lovely stamens. But the gold is such a beautiful colour. And especially now with the colour bloom sprays that Prima have come out with, um, you can really mix and match things very well. Um, white has to be one of my very favourite colours for flowers because you can do so much with it. You can colour it with sprays or paint, you can stamp on it. You can use it just as it is and it's a very subtle background. These ones are lovely because they've got a glitter on the first layer and then the second layer is plain so it really adds a dimension to it that you perhaps wouldn't see otherwise. Now the number for that one is 574-802. Now I'm not actually looking at the chat, sorry guys, because um, I'm too busy paying attention to the camera. So I'll just have a little quick look. Yep, we're all good, and yes, people are still seeing me. So that's cool. And finally, one of my favourites, I use leaves on all my projects and the reason I do that is because I think they add a really good dimension to a project and you can layer them without it being um, too over the top. See how flat they are? They're beautiful. You can either put some foam under them, you know, foam tape if you want to add dimension or they can just fit into your project and just add something without it being too much. Now this number here is 575403. And when I'm talking about these and adding them into something so that they just sit there subtly, I'll show you what I mean. I just made this little baggie this morning. And what we're going to do, this is our prize for today. And what you can see over here is this is the red flower I was talking about earlier that came in this packet with the black flower. And that's the red one as well. And what we've got here is we've got... Um, the leaves just popped under here and that just adds another dimension. Hey guys, just seeing you talking about the um, commercial, there should be, there's something in Japanese underneath it. If you click on that, it skips the commercial. So wait for the numbers to count down. If there's no numbers, you can skip the commercial. Yep, okay, just having a look. Um, so what I've done here is I've just, this is just a bag made out of canvas. I've popped away um, prizes inside it, which I'll show you in a minute. I've used stationer's desk flowers and embellishments and ribbon, um, just so that it matches what we're doing today. And inside, we've got um, a packet of wood embellishments and a mechanicals set and two packets of flowers. And all you have to do to win this, we're going to put um, everyone's names in the drawer. If you go to my blog, um, which is www.trinamcloon.typepad.com, Trina McLoon is spelled T-R-I-N-A-M-C-C-L-U-N-E, or you can just Google Trina McLoon, and you'll find my blog. It's called Living My Dream. And leave a comment on today's post, which is all about this class that we're doing today. And in a couple of days, I will pick a random number or one of those random select as well. And we will send the I will send the post with this this gorgeous little bag out to you with all its little prizes inside. So please do enter. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, um, we're going to use quite a few punches today. They are all from Martha Stewart. I will give you or Kerry might give you the details as we go through. She's got all the names and numbers for them. Well, not the numbers, but the names. Um, these are them. These two we may or may not use. It just depends on whether we use actual flowers and butterflies. Um, we've got a couple of round ones that we're going to be using. This one is one inch, and this one is half an inch. So it doesn't matter what brand you've got, as long as you've got those sizes, perhaps. And then this one is a gorgeous um, garden arch one. We're going to make the house of the 
the roof house out of that one. We've got a little fence that we're going to use and we're going to make a fence around our birdhouse. And then this is a scallop one that we're going to use. And this one is a layered one so that you can do it in two different ways. And we're going to make um, the outside of the hole where the bird goes into its house out of it. So coming back to this, here is our project. <clears throat> and as I said, um, we've got starting over. We've got this one, which is how it starts out as, and it's just plain wood. Now all three of these I bought at Michael's for just one dollar. Um, I don't know if that's cheap for you guys, but for me it was incredibly cheap because in New Zealand there's no way you get anything like that for a dollar. So I bought the three of them home and I've made this project, but because we've got the square one, we're going to end up with two that look like this but one square and one's round and as we go through I'll tell you the different details if there are any for the round one of how to make a round one. First thing that I do though is I just painted it with gesso. Um, no particular way, just slap, slap, slap and the reason I did that is I just find that it helps things stick better. The other thing that I did with it is it had a little steeple on it and I didn't want the steeple you may want to keep your steeple on if you buy one. So I just took a knife to it and pulled it all off. Yes, I'm a bit naughty, aren't I? And then this, which was the hanging piece, I took that out. And I don't know actually how I did it because it's still got the knots on the end. I must have just pulled it out from underneath. Um, but what I've then allowed us to do is have a little hole in the top where we can put some banners. And those banners, we will use some of the... Prima stamps to perhaps put on a title or a message to someone if we're going to give it away. So let's get going. I'm just going to have a wee quick look on the chat and see how we're all going. I'm just going to say hi to Peggy and, and to Alter Joe and to Shalili and Scraping Corner and Pam and Amy. Hello everybody. So the hardest part on this is probably the front. So we'll come to that last. These parts here, and I've actually cut it all already. Just to save us time. <coughs> um, what I did is I would cut, I would work out how big a piece of paper I needed. And the way I'd do that is I'd just pop it up here and I'd grab my pencil and make a mark and then use my trusty trimmer to cut it all apart. And once I'd done that and I'd got a length like this, then of course you just pop it in here, make the mark and you cut off the side. So the two sides were easy. This part here with the triangle is a little more tricky. And what I did with this, and I'm going to sh show you with know with this piece of paper is I used the very corner piece of a whole piece of paper or of a third of a piece of paper as this one is and I popped it in like this and then I turned it over and I made a marking down the side like so and like so and then what you've got here is you can just trim that there trim that there trim across the bottom and all of a sudden, it's nice and easy. And it can just be popped into there like that and glued on. The front, we did exactly the same. And we got the piece of paper the right size. And then the next part is I used my one inch punch along with a ruler. And I measured down from the top that it was two centimetres from the top corner down to where the two centimetres finished. And then I made a mark. And at that mark, I took my piece of uh, paper. Hang on, I've lost my other. I have another punch that um, went all the way through. And you just went straight in and punched it. Alternatively, what you can do, if your punch like this one just goes to a certain point without going any further, you can just punch a piece from a spare piece of paper, 
pop it on the top of where your two centimeter mark is, which is the mark between the top of the birdhouse and the top of the hole. And then you can just draw a circle and then you can just use your craft knife and of course Prima have got their own craft knives and just cut it out. So that gets you the piece, the base piece and also the hole that we're going to be able to pop things into if we want to. Now the next piece is even more tricky and so what I did is I grabbed a piece of chalking and I popped it on the top here like this and I grabbed my piece of paper and I put it down on top like so and what it does is it leaves a mark if you've got enough ink there I'll just put a bit more on and it gives you a really good idea of where I'm not sure if you can see that of where you need to cut that round hole and then you simply use a craft knife to dig into there and then just cut around it and that means that you've got a piece that fits exactly perfectly onto the front of your house, your birdhouse. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to stick those down and I don't know about you guys but my favourite glue is this Helmer glue and I have to say that Sharon um, put me onto it and it is brilliant. It works on everything and it dries really quickly and it's hard wearing and if you've got something that may or may not want to come off if it's on a brittle surface like on um, I don't know some porcelain or something it, it bends with it so you don't have things just popping off. You ever heard that saying you jumping like fleas with it sometimes? <laughs> Well, sometimes I had projects where the things that I'd stuck on would just kind of pop off like fleas jumping. And um, that was because the, the glue wasn't the right sort. But this is fantastic. So we've got the two, the front and the side on. Of course, if you guys like to do inking, it's very easy just to pop a bit along the side. And in this case, I'm using Old Road. It is my very favorite color from Prima. And... See how well it goes with this grey? It's just made the stationer's desk. And what it does is it just, if you have got any bits that don't quite match up, it makes it look that way, like it's been done on purpose. And in fact, what we can do at the end is go back and ink all the way around the edges. And you just simply do that by grabbing the ink and running it along the side. Now if you find, because of the corners like that, you can't get into the edges, I just use my old cotton buds. Oops, you can't see them. Pop a bit of ink onto it, like so. And then run that along the edges and that will get you into any corner that you perhaps may not have otherwise gotten into. Now how are we doing guys? Are we keeping up or am I going too fast, too slow? You just let me know how we're going. Hi Lemore. Okay, so now we have got all of this base decorated and that was pretty simple. We're going to leave this for the moment because we're going to come back and decorate it later with our fence and our grass and maybe a few flowers and a little birdie etc. So what we're going to concentrate on now is the roof and what I did for this is I grabbed a favourite punch now in this case, I'm just going to go and have a look at it, it is the Garden Rail Edge Punch, which is from Martha Stewart, and I just cut off a piece, you guys all know how to punch, 
just pop it in here, make sure it lines up with that and punch away. And it makes a beautiful design. Now I have got some already punched here so that you can see. And what I've done in this case is I've used the red to offset the grey. And I think that looks really lovely together. Now there are two ways that we can do this. You can either just line it up one after the other like so and keep it quite um, flat or as I've done we can have them folded up into little pieces and stick them on like this. Now to do that all I did is I grabbed a piece and I'm just going to cut this bit off the end because I don't really want the white bit on and then I just folded it and there's no set rhyme or reason and as you can see it's very random and I just did that very quickly and then I measured it out on here until it's the right length and cut it off and that's just about perfect and then when we go to stick it down what we can do is we can just put the glue all over the, cut them all to length, cut them all to size, fold them all up, make sure that we've got enough and then we can stick them all down, just put a bit of glue on here and then stick it all down and that's exactly what we're going to do now and then what we've got is if we've got it too, too wide we can just trim the edges off in a little minute. So because I have prepared this earlier I'm going to do exactly that and we're just going to stick some glue on And then what I do is I start at the bottom. And the reason I start at the bottom is so that you can cover all the bits off or up. And I've just left it hanging over the edges. And yeah, that's this is the one thing that I don't like about this glue is it's really stringy and so you get little bits of it all over the place which is actually nice afterwards when you're pulling it all off <laughs> one of those silly things that I quite like but it's not good at the time when you're trying to put things down and they're all stringy okay so we're just adhering all of these and you can see that it's making a lovely roof line. And we'll just keep on doing that. I'm just going to take that white bit off again. And what I've done with this is I've just layered it ever so slightly over the one below it. So that there's no white showing. And if you want to, you can have it with the white showing of course. And that would make another good um, layer or piece of depth added into your uh, birdhouse. Now if you were doing this on the round one, what I did is I did exactly what we're doing here. And then I added it into each piece and I just started at the bottom and just went round and round and round and round until I got to the top. And once I got to the top, I used this punch here, which is another Martha Stewart one, and it is called the Embroidery Large Double Punch. And what I did is I punched a piece out of the same paper, and because it's a round doily, I then just stuck it over the top and it covered over all the edges that were left And we're going to do something similar, but not with a round one. So we're just doing that, and then we're going to do the other side as well. Because it wouldn't be good if it was only half finished, eh? Now, 
how are we all going with my accent? Is everyone okay with it? You can understand and hear what I'm, I'm saying. Haven't used any words that are a bit different. Hopefully not. Disting out if I do. And I'll try and keep up. Just see Kerry's asking about their favourite collection from this release from Prima and I have to say it's very hard for me to choose because I love them all. Isn't it terrible when that happens because you just want to buy it all. Actually it's not terrible because then you've got lots more product to play with. Oh Scrappy Camper you've been to New Zealand. Thank you for saying that. It really is pretty isn't it? Where did you go? Okay. And I didn't quite make enough of these, so we're just going to do it as we go. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Ah, oh, Jan, you're here. Jan is one of my friends, and she used to live just a couple of hours away, and now she's moved to the South Island, and we miss her. Yes, Scrappy Camper, you're right. Awesome ice cream. Something Blue is one of my favourites too. And even though it's a wedding collection, it actually can be used for anything. I just did something the other day about my daughter with it. And it was perfect. No one's seen it yet. So we're just sticking this on waiting for it to catch so I can carry on. Oh, uh, Delana, I'm, yeah, well, Stationer's Desk, I'm obviously a fan. What I'm do is just cut that here. I'm not very good at reading and scrapbooking at the same time. <laughs> Pam, yes, the best ice cream. And in fact, there's a place about half an hour's drive from where I live, just on the outskirts of Auckland, called Pocono. And it has the best ice cream. And we were coming back from our summer holiday just the other day, and I stopped there with my family. And we had one called Caramel Fudge. And it has a ton of little fudge pieces in the ice cream. And it's a caramel flavor. And I have to say, it's my best favorite ice cream ever. I don't know what the brand was. Oh, Louise, you're in the South Island. Hello, you're a mainlander. Delena, I can't read and teach and scrap. I'm so not doing this. Okay, we're going to let that dry for a little minute, but can you see what's going on here and how we've just layered upon layered upon layered? And as you can see, there are lots and lots of edges coming along here. And we're just, once it's all dried properly, we're going to cut them off. But what we're going to do now is just grab out some more of this paper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut, yep, mm, there may not be enough room. I'm just going to check something first. No, there's not going to be enough room on that one. So let me grab this one here. Because what we're going to do is just cut a little bit off here. Make, I'm just going to stand up for this. Do you guys stand up to scrap or do you sit to scrap? I find that I do a combination. Okay, that's perfect. And what we're going to do, don't worry, I'm not just ripping this, scraping that onto the floor. There is a rubbish bin there. Haha. <laughs> you wouldn't know if there wasn't, would you? And we're just going to take out that. 
and we're going to use that. And we're going to go along to there because that's about enough. And because it doesn't have to be perfect, I'm just going to cut that. I'm going to pop that back down there, pop that over there. And here's my punch again. Now I'm never perfect with this, I don't always have to have them lined up, so I just shove it on in there and give it a go. Yep, that's about right. I got away with it that time. There was no set um, measurement that I made just then. But what I'm trying to do, and this is where I will put my, um, what do you call these ones? They're not blades. They make the fold. And I have forgotten what it is. Scorer. It's a scoring blade. And I'm just putting that in the middle and just making a little light score line on there. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, maybe there when I'm putting it to the side. And what it's done is it's just put it in half, made it really easy to fold a really nice natural line. And then that can go right on the very top. And it gives it, instead of having a mission of a um, horrible line there, we've got this. What I am going to do is grab my awl. This is one of my favorite tools ever. And it's about there. There we go. And I'm just going to make this hole so that we can put things into it later. And again, it doesn't have to be particularly tidy. Although if you want to, you can get a hole punch once you put the initial hole in and make it very tidy. Just going to cut that off from the inside. And then we're going to glue that down as well. And usually at this point, I would grab, and see, I had one ready in my rubbish bin, a rubber band, and pop it around the item, and that just holds it in place while you're doing something else, because you can't always necessarily be standing there just holding something, waiting for it to dry. So a rubber band is a really good way of holding it in place. And while that's drying, what we're going to do is we're going to create the lovely decoration around the whole of the birdhouse. And I mean, theoretically, you don't need to do that, but I just like to make things pretty, so why not? And what I did, we're going to put away this one, and we're going to get this one out. And I'm just going to put that to the side. This one is called, let me just find it for you. See, look. I've got all my little notes here with which is called what. And this punch is called a scallop circle layering punch. And what happens, I'll just show you quickly, is if you pop it in and just do a punch like that, see how it's on the on this side of the of the punch? And what that did is it punched out two pieces. So you've got layers. If I switch this and move it across. To that side you just get the one punch and I'll show you the difference and it just comes out as a single scallop so you don't have the inside or the outside so I actually really like this because I think it's um, what's the word economical because you actually get two punches for the price of one well it's slightly more than the price of one but it's one of my favorites now that one was called a uh, scallop circle layering punch so we've got a black piece of paper that I've used for that. And I have done the two pieces. I'm not sure if you can hear it, but you can actually hear it cut once and then cut twice. And so that's what we've got there. And I'm sorry, I've just lied to you because we don't want two pieces, we want one piece. Okay, so that's what we've got. And then what I did is I used a lovely grey around the outside. 
and what I did to get that is I just used my one inch punch and I punched it out I lie that's the wrong punch it should be bigger than that here is my punch here it is I think let me check this one no that's the same size I'm trying to think what I've done there. <laughs> I've obviously used another punch and I've got out the wrong ones. But what we've got here is we've got two layers. We've got the dark layer first that we've punched out and then we've got this one and this one is actually looks like one and a half inches so you just need a one and a half circle inch one and a half inch circle punch as well then what I did is I grabbed this teeny tiny half circle punch and what I do when I'm not sure if I want to see where I'm punching is I turn it over and pop this into roughly the middle and punch away and what that does is that gives me an opening it doesn't have to be in the perfect place and then I just take my craft knife and I'm going to show you a little trick here is if you have a glass mat and in this case I've got one which was used for um, what was that machine? Uh, memory makers and it cut things out anyway it's on here and it just makes things much easier and quicker to cut and this is what I use for all of my fussy cutting it, yes it does blunt your, your knife blade quicker but it is so 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 much faster and easier and once you've got all of those little holes punched out or uh, not punched but cut you just fold it back like so roughly until it's roughly in a circle and then you can pop it in here into your birdhouse and actually make it fit for real then all you need to do is pop a bit of glue around the edges and also just on the inside of the birdhouse just on the edges just inside here just so that these pieces will stick to the edge and again if you can't reach with your actual glue if I can't do that then I grab this little glue glossy accents because it's got a nice thin tip and I can put that around or I grab out my cotton buds again and I did have a few before and they've gone now here they are and we're just going to put a little piece on here and you can add that glue like so and this again this is not necessary because you're not actually going to see this but if you're really worried about the glue showing or you you know you're a bit concerned or you don't like things showing then you can do it that way and it just makes it nice and tidy so what we've got here is this and we're just pushing this out to the side and it may even rip a little bit because you may not have cut it exactly right and that's okay oh thanks guys you guys are saying some lovely things punches do you know what I do with mine they are all actually I should show you I wonder if I can just tip that up can you see on the floor there that big basket it's full of my punches that I've collected over the last few years. Don't look, it's a bit messy right now. Okay, we're back here and back that way. All right. So what we've done is we've got that and we've stuck it in. And that's sticking really well. Now, if you want to, at that point, you could have used some foam tape. Just cut a teeny tiny bit off 
and pop it around these edges here and then it will stick up a bit more. As you can see on here, because it's round, it does have more dimension to it because it doesn't stick down this way because that would make it just look funny. So what we can do, and I might do it with this second piece, is you just cut off teeny, teeny, tiny strips. I don't know about you guys, but I have about a billion pairs of scissors, and one is just my sticky scissors, which I only use for sticky things. And then it doesn't matter um, when you're cutting paper or anything else, because it's not going to get sticky stuff all over it, because you've, you've used a different pair of scissors. Okay. And especially with these tiny little scissors, they're actually really cheap. And you get them, I don't know about in you guys, but in New Zealand they're about $8. So I think that's a good investment to save my other scissors. Okay, and I'm just having a wee look here because I don't want the writing to be upside down. So I'm just going to turn it around like so and pop it on top. And then just do the same sort of thing here push it in and around so that it looks like a lovely round hole. So what we've got there is we've got two different layers and you've also got the colours between the two greys are different with this one has got lots of little um, bits of writing on them so it just gives it a bit more texture, a bit more dimension and you can see maybe a little bit from the side how this one's just sticking up a little bit just because we've put that little thin layer of foam tape on it. All right, now this is going to come off. Yep, sticking pretty well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this. Actually, I'm going to do it with scissors. And just trim that off we don't need that anymore. And this is where you can also grab your um, ink, our chalk ink, and just run it down the side here. And then it gives it an aged look and it kind of matches in to the paper that we've got there. I'm just going down the side. Obviously I was naughty, I'm using my sticky scissors here now, but to be honest, the reason for that is because the glue is still not dry entirely. Okay, perfect. And we're just going to take this down the back side as well. Oh, that sounded a bit funny. Down the back part of the birdhouse. So we have a wee little birdhouse, totally covered in decorations. And the next part we're going to do, and this is the fun part, and this is where the fussy cutting comes in for me, it's one of my favourite things, is we grab out this stunningly beautiful paper, which if you remember from the beginning, was the same as this red piece here and I'm just going to use these um, leftover pieces oops, I'm going to sit down for this and I'm in no particular um, I don't have any ideas of really what I want I have already cut some out and all we're going to do is just make some pieces to go around this part here you can see I've just I've just added in little bits of flowers and leaves. And sorry guys, just going back a step. See how this is round? All I did for this, you know, for the base, because we talked about how we cut the base of these in four pieces. With this one, I cut it in one piece. I measured the depth between here, the top and the bottom, and then I cut one strip of paper that depth. And then I joined them together at the back here. And the way I got the 
pieces to meet was exactly the same as how I did it here so that I knew where the hole was to cut out the holes there and I just made that in the middle and I, I made the strip wait you know maybe an inch or two longer so then it didn't matter where I cut the hole I didn't have to be precise okay so back to the cutting and we're just gonna go now I'm not particularly fussy with my cutting but see how quick it is when you've got a piece of glass underneath you it just is very very simple now did you know the other trick with cutting is to move the paper and not the knife another little hint for you there so that that is actually quite a cool little piece because that can just sit and go along the bottom and then even be folded around and sit there like that and what's going to happen is we're not going to see all of this because we're going to have it covered over with our fence and our grass so we can just cut these pieces and as we cut them we can stick them down so that we know that we're happy with them and where they're going so that we don't cut too many or too few for that matter okay and then I have got this one here and this one here I do like the flowers so what I might do is try and bring that flower around here so that we've got a piece of the leaves showing and then if I fold it in here you can see what we've got with whoops <laughs> sorry guys I was showing you way off screen um, and then we've got the flower just coming up around here so I'll pop that one on can you see all the stringy bits of glue they're coming off the fingers and off here. It looks funny. Okay, and I've got this other lovely, huge, big rose. But what I might do with it is bring this set of flowers along here and around. And then that rose can even go around like so. is too much I'm just going to pop it over here onto that piece of paper and we want that to go down there and around and around some more Now the other thing I do with this glue, if it gets to be too much, and there is, you know, because these bits here were little thin pieces, and as, oh, I grab my trusty cotton buds again. What do you guys call these in the States? I'm just reading again, sorry. And what you can do is if there's extra glue, you can just grab it off with the end of the cotton bud. And then there's not so much glue hanging around. So what we've got is we've got our little pieces of leaves all the way through. And again, what I might do with this piece here before it sticks is grab some of this and just pop it up because it'll give it a nice piece of dimension there we go and so can you see the how it's with the foam tape it's just lifted it and I think that looks much better
So we're just about ready to finish up the edges and around the bottom. Okay, so what I did, and this is where I used another punch, is I thought it's a birdhouse. What do houses often have around them? And they have fences. And I thought, right, I've got a fence punch from um, Martha Stewart, and it is just called a fence edger punch. Um, let's use that. And so I grabbed a piece of paper from the range that I hadn't used yet. And I believe it was this one here, which is 813796, and it's called Captured Drama. And it doesn't matter which side you use. And I punched it out, so I had one long strip. And it actually doesn't even need to be the full 12 inches. This one's about just over nine and a half inches, but it's going to depend on the size of your birdhouse because you can see this one here is bigger than this one. So you're going to have to measure your own birdhouse or whatever project you're using because I'd hate for you to get the measurements wrong. And then what I did, once I had cut it out, I grabbed my, <coughs> excuse me, my trimmer again, and this one again with the um, scoring blade in it and then I just went around and I measured each piece okay so that's and I got my pencil my screen's just gone blank so hang on a moment while I just get it back up okay and when you've got your measurement here, you just take it off and you use the scoring blade and you pop it in here and you just score it down. Once it's scored, then you just fold it in half. Once you've got all of the sides measured so that you know it can fit all the way around and fit just perfectly, what I did to make it stand out from to stand out from the edge is I then scored it again the whole way along in one length so that I could fold that in and this piece here is what's going to be glued down and then the last thing I did is I got my scissors and I just cut a little triangle into where each piece folds so that it's going to sit nicely because if you don't cut that triangle out, then it's going to fold and buckle and it won't be as nice on your um, project. So what I did next is grab some more glue. I'm just going to move this glass out of the way because we don't need that for the minute. And I find with this glue actually, um, that if the longer it sits there without getting too dry, the better it is for gluing on a project like this, because it will just get tacky enough so that it will sit nicely. And you kind of have to not mind that you're getting glue everywhere. I'm just going to get the glue off my fingers so that it doesn't stick to things as I just make it sit properly. And what you'll notice with this is that you can't have it, um, this little piece that you're gluing in the bottom, oops, which way are we going to show it? This way here. The little piece that it, you put the glue on to actually attach it to the base. So the piece that's getting glued onto here, you need to make sure that it's not too wide. Because if it's too wide, then it will stick out from 
this edge part and we won't be able to put the grass on it to fit around properly. Okay, so the grass. What I used for the grass is this die here, which is a Cherry Lynn die. And if you can see there, it is just grass. And what I do is I use my good old cell binders, Grand Calibre. And this is the trick that I use for something as intricate as this. You can often find that they'll rip as you pull them out. So I grab the good old waxed paper, rip a piece off, stick it between with the waxy shiny side facing the die so it will just pop out when you're finished. Onto the die. And then you grab what colour did we use for around there? We used a bit of a red and a green. So I'm going to go with Um, let's have a look, because I've already got some cut off, so it doesn't really matter. So let's go with this one. Okay, so that goes on there. This goes on top of here like so. That goes on top. And then you pop it on through. And I'm sure if you've got like any other kind of um, program, what are they called, crickets and stuff like that, they might have something that you could use as well. I know that Prima work with physics, they may have something. Now, because it's gone through and because we've got the paper there, it just pops off. It makes it really easy. And then to get this out, I'll just show you because it's super, super easy. You just pop your all in through the bottom. And it just literally just comes out and then I just use my all again and just grab a piece in the middle and this waxed paper then comes off so in fact what you've got is two pieces of the same um, design cut out you can use this again if you want to but if you do you must glue the side that's not the wax side because otherwise it won't glue it won't stick because it's it's waxed now I'm going to put that aside over there and put these aside over here and bring out the pieces I've already cut. And then what we're going to do is we're doing exactly the same as what we did for the fence, but we're going to use the grass and we're going to use it right along the bottom and I'm actually going to stick it starting at the front here like this and this time I'm going to use the glossy accents and the reason I'm using the glossy accents is because the nozzle where the glue comes out is much thinner and I don't this is so thin that I don't want a huge bit of glue sticking onto it everywhere and because I haven't used this for a couple of days, I'm just going to use my oil to open it up again. And then I just ran a little bit of glue along here until it's all covered. And if you want to, you can go back later. If you find a piece that you don't like, you can stick it down or one that you do like. As you see, this one doesn't quite go the whole way round. That's okay, that's why I've cut two pieces. And if you find it doesn't stick like that, then just stick another piece on. Another piece of glue, I mean, another squirt of glue. And then for this final bit, just going to cut it to size.
and stick another piece of dollop of glue along here. That time I went along the base of the uh, birdhouse because it was actually easier. So you can do things more than one way. And because this is just coming around the corner here, I'm just going to put a little dollop of glue here as well and pop that down. Just so it tidies it all up. And we're just about finished guys. Just seeing we're over our hour. So we're just going to do the final bits of decorating. And do you know what they are? The fun bits! Yay! Um, we're going to add in some flowers and we're going to add in a bird. I'm going to do the bird first. Now this bird, they come in these packets. The good old shabby chic um, treasures. And you'll notice some of them have got bigger feet than others. And this one is 890773. And what I do, because in this case I don't want the feet, I just break them off. <laughs> Feels a bit naughty, but it's perfectly fine. You're allowed to do that because it's your project. And then I cut them to make them a little bit nicer. And then I just pop them down there like that and attach with some glue like so. And this one is going to be easier to glue onto there. And it is done. And he looks like he is sitting on the birdhouse. Just on that ledge there. Okay, and then what I did is I grabbed some of these flowers for this project, which we then added in some little flowers cut from this punch. But because I've now got some of the gorgeous range from a stationer's desk, I'm going to actually add in some beautiful flowers like this. And we won't need to use the punch. And what I do at this stage is, this is one of my favourite packets of flowers from Prima. It's just called um, Prima Flowers Wildflowers Pillar Pack. And there are a billion, as you can see, there are billions of flowers in here. I mean, that's just about a third of them. And I tip them out onto the desk. They're all white, so you can spray them, you can paint them, you can do whatever you want with them. And then you can just add, I want a teeny tiny one. And there are teeny tiny ones. Oh, here it is. There's a teeny tiny one. You see them all over my desk, aren't they beautiful? And I'm going to glue that there. And then I'm going to stick that beautiful sparkly one on top. And that just adds a bit more sparkle and a bit more pizzazz. And then what we can do is pop this one underneath, coming in there. So you can see how I do lots of layers. I just love my layers. I love my layers. And where's my... I want some more of these because I want another, but I want a grey one. Just a little grey one. See there's different sizes? How cool are these? Beautiful. Did I tell you the number of them? I will tell you again. 574581. And that's just going to go up there like that. How cute is that? So, what we've got here is a birdhouse just about finished decorating. But before we leave, I want to show you how we made these little things. These are just skewers that you get, you know, you when you're cooking and you put your meat on them and put them in to grill. That's what these are skewers. And then, what I did is I grabbed out a piece of paper that I liked the look of for this. My desk is getting messy. And I took it down there like that. And I wanted it about this width actually, so we're going to go with that. And then cut a little piece off. I worked out how big I wanted them. And you'll see that there are three different sizes. And so I did cut them in half like this and then I got my skewer and I stuck some glue on here and I stuck it together 
And once it's stuck together, and this again is why I'm using these scissors, once it's stuck together in the right place, all you need to do is cut the edge into a little triangle and it becomes a banner. and make it nice and tight in here so that it sticks there. But it has got glue on there so it will stick there. And then what I did is I worked out how much of this I wanted showing. Now obviously that's going to be too high. So then I grabbed a pair of wire cutters and cut it off. And yep, that's probably going to be about right. And I stuck it in. And I continued doing that. And this time we can use the same piece of paper, which is here and we can have the grey side on the outside and this one is going to be just a nice little one because that one was quite a long one and we're going to do that again and pop another piece of skewer into the middle of it stick it down cut the triangle into it and that gives you the lovely banner look. And this is where, if you want to, before you stick it down, you can use your stamps, your Prima stamps, and put a little message on there. Because the message, these could go in the middle of a table, they could be filled with lollies for a friend. Um, perhaps she was feeling you know, a bit low, you wanted to send her something as a special pick-me-up. Just chuck some lollies into here and then she could have fun trying to get them out. And there we have it. One birdhouse decorated with beautiful stationer's desk range. And a little banner that you can put your notes on. So guys, that's it. Oh my goodness, we're finished. I can't believe it. What's the time? We're a little bit over. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I do have some announcements. Exciting to say, and we just talked about it at the beginning, Art Venture Canada, April 11 to 13. Um, there is going to be... Oh, I'll just bring you back up here. Hello again. Um, it's going to be at Cornwall, Ontario, Canada, which is on the East Coast. Um, it's an all-inclusive weekend, including accommodation, meals, goodie bags, and more. You know Prima, they always do more. Um, six amazing classes, as you know Prima does, by Lemore, by Jamie, and by Kerry. Kerry's right here. Yay, you're going to see Kerry. Um, we've got project samples coming soon, so just keep an eye out on all the um, social media because they'll be out soon. Limited spots are available, so book now. All you have to do is put down a $50 deposit, and you're, you're in. Uh, so check out this event on the Prima Marketing Flowers fan page under events section. And if you want to come and see another class, then all we, you need to do is check in on Tuesday the 4th of February, which is our next one. It's going to be Frank Garcia and Jody Lee on Tuesday, February 4th at 11am Pacific Time. And that's going to be showcasing the new Princess Collection, which is delightful. So... Thanks guys for coming along today. I really appreciate you being here and I hope you've enjoyed the class and uh, I hope to see you again another day. Bye.